Hello everyone and welcome back to another video. So this is the summary for Psychic Awakening War of the Spider. A massive shout out to Shakaius once again for providing the write up for this. He's an absolute legend. Please go over and thank him on Reddit. The link is in the description of this video. Now let's jump in and let's go through the lore. And let's start with the introduction. Though the fortress world of Cadia long stood defiant against Abaddon, it could not stand forever. Abaddon shattered Cadia and left it a ruined husk. As he moved on, the Eye of Terror followed in his wake. Day by day, the Eye swallowed more of the Cadian Gate. One system after another was beset by madness and psychic mutation. As the bulk of Abaddon's 13th Black Crusade forces marched behind their master towards Vigilus, teeming hordes of heretics and Xenos swept through the Cadian Gate to prey on the Imperial strongholds that remained. One subgroup of heretics is Fabius Bile and his allies. Fabius has used his guile to lure in the Death Guard and the elite agents of the Emperor in order to reap their bile harvest for his nightmarish schemes. Yet he and his forces are outnumbered, and he will have to use all his genius and cunning to emerge victorious. Chapter 1 Everything changed on the world of Casador, homeworld of the Brazen Drakes chapter as a Noctis attorney descended on the galaxy. It's unknown how the chapter master Agerneo Corian fell from the light. Some believe he had always hid his latent psychic abilities, while others claim they had manifested due to the Great Rift's influence. By the time the Noctis attorney ended, half of the brazen drakes had turned renegade, sparking a brutal war with their loyalist battle brothers that would consume free systems. The war was ended when the Torchbearer Task Force, charged with delivering the Primaris Gene Tech to the chapter, arrived. For the sins of having heretic blood in their veins, the handful of brazen Drake Grey Shields aboard the Torchbearer fleet was slain by the Custodes, who went on to defeat the brazen Drakes. Chapter Master Corian renamed himself the Enlightener, and escaped with the survivors of his warriors to the Nachman Gauntlet, hoping to make a crossing to the safety of the lawless regions beyond. Not satisfied with just routing the heretics, S.H.I.E.L.D. Captain Atal Taivar vowed to hunt them down and set off his torchbearer fleet in pursuit of the Brazen Drakes. Unknown to Atal, news of treachery of the Brazen Drakes reached terror. Another elite Imperial force was mobilised to track down and eliminate the Brazen Drakes. It was by chance that Fabius Bile crossed paths with the Enlightener and his warband in the war-torn expanse of the Cadian Gate and it was a chance that he used to his advantage. Furthering his newest diabolical scheme, Fabius and a ragtag alliance of warbands descended on the Scourge Stars and made off with a demonic artifact called the Ark. With a furious Typhus hounding his heels, Fabius fled back towards the Eye of Terror. The Ark is an arcane artifact bestowed on the Death Guard by the great unclean one Rotogus. The Ark sees with the power of Nurgle, it inflicts horrific and uncontrollable body regeneration. To the unnatural physiology of the Death Guard, this was a boon. In battle, the emissions of the Ark healed them faster than their enemies could harm them. However, the Ark's effects on other beings was a gruesome blight. It transformed them and afflicted them into heavy mounds of diseased, cancerous flesh. Fabius could not flee back to his stronghold, lest he brings the wrath of the Death Guard upon it. So when he happened on the Brazen Drakes, he saw an opportunity to delay his pursuers before he made his escape. The Brazen Drakes had claimed the fortress world of Desia and reforged themselves into a warband of the Black Legion called the Shriven. Their master, the Enlightener, struck up an alliance of mutual distrust with the Primal Genitor. Bio saw that the Shriven were suited as pawns to turn on his pursuers, while in turn, they saw his gifts as power they needed to crush their Imperial Hunters. Chapter 2 With the Alliance cemented, Fabius co-opted a suite of bio-warded vaults as his laboratories and began augmenting the initial wave of Shriven warriors. Bio saw that the Enlightener had lost none of his strategic cunning and charisma of his loyalist days. He had gathered around him a sizable force of heretic marines as well as a horde of lost and the damned and above Desire prowled the menacing fleet of the Shriven, all resources that Fabius planned to exploit. When told about the coming threat of the Death Guard, it was expected that the Enlightener would fly into a rage. He did not. The augmentations and the elixirs that Fabius had gifted him had made him stronger, and also snared him to Fabius with hooks of addiction and dependency. 
the Enlightener was transformed into Fabius's puppet, regardless of his wishes. Warp scrying by the Enlightener's sorcerers informed him of the size of the Death Guard fleet. If such a force landed on Desire, the fight might go ill for Fabius. Even if the Shriven emerged victorious, they would be too weakened to fight the Imperial forces that were also drawing closer. It was decided that a preemptive strike was needed. A trap would be placed on the world of Lymaxis. Moving fast, the Shriven mobilised half of their forces to Lymaxis, accompanied by Fabius and the first batch of augmented Shriven marines called the Terrata. Detecting their prey, Typhus's plague fleet emerged from the warp like maggots bursting out from a corpse. Typhus found Fabius's damaged ship hanging dead over a nearby world. Suspecting a trap, Typhus ordered the ship to be shot down to the planet's surface. The Ark was blessed by Nurgle and would survive the crash. Fabius and his men on the other hand would not. As Fabius's ship plunged down towards the planet, it activated its emergency thrusters and graciously glided down towards the planet's surface. Typhus led a large invasion force after the downed ship to retrieve the Ark and Adela, Fabius's head. As the rusted landers of the Death Guard disgorged waves of plague marines, cultists and demon engines, Typhus and his terminators investigated the wreckage of Fabius's ship. To Typhus's displeasure, what he found was a rabble of clone slaves and a huge bomb. What followed was an explosion that sent blazing debris crashing on the alarmed Death Guard forces. Before its echoes died out, the Vox channels were filled with distress calls from orbit. The plague fleet was under attack. Making the use of the concealment of Bio's stolen Drakari night shields, the shriven ships dove into the plague fleet and sent punishing fire into their diseased enemies. The surviving and undamaged plague chicks broke from orbit towards clear space, hoping to reform their lines and mount a counter-attack. Dreadclaw drop plots delivered Shriven and Bile forces onto the surface. They were joined by the advanced bands of the Terrata as they advanced on the Death Guard positions. The Enlightener hovered above the battlefield, his eyes blazing with war power. Bile shadowed him and sent altered warriors to drive back plague marines who attempted to break out. At first, the Death Guard recoiled from the furious assault, but quickly dug in and fought back. Lesser forces might have panicked or been overrun, but they are the Death Guard, known by all for their legendary tenacity, and they displayed it now. Their defiance was rewarded when buzzing filled the air, announcing the survival of Typhus. Burned and wounded, but still alive, Typhus led the surviving Terminators from the burning wreckage and rallied around him demon engines, turning them into an armoured fist that he used to smash into the Shriven and stall their momentum. The tables were flipped on the Shriven, as they found themselves being blasted by autumn bombardment, the encircling firing patterns herding them forward, forcing them to become caught between the ruinous detonations and the fire of the Death Guard guns. Worse still for the Shriven and Bile, a fresh force of Death Guard made planetfall. Innumerable masses of Poxwalkers swarmed the Shriven. It seemed that the ambushes were caught in their own trap. However, this offence wasn't meant to be fought to the death. The Enlightener and Bio placed contingencies should the tides of battle turn against them. The surviving forces of the Shriven fought their way through the Poxwalkers. Some Marines were pulled down by the Griving Never Dead. Their armour was slowly peeled off, and questing fingers smashed into their lenses and dug into their eye sockets beneath. Yet with the augmented might of Bio's warriors and the Enlightener's psychic power, the Shriven managed to reach their hidden landing zones and escape with their lives. Chapter 3 the Shriven returned triumphant to Desire, brimming with confidence in their belief that they had outmaneuvered and outfought Typhus himself. So drunk from victory and the thirst for power that Fabius found no shortage of willing subjects for his surgeries. The Enlightener was less than pleased than his men, for he felt that his authority over his warband was slipping day by day. Bile made sure he could not act against him directly, however, he can remind his men who the true master was. When the slave seers revealed that the Imperial Torchbearer fleet had arrived to the world of Bearston Prime in the Bellus Cornish system, the Enlighter announced that he would not be coward in his stronghold. He would go and meet them in battle. Fabius had little interest in supporting such an obvious attempt at posturing, but Bile had his own agenda on Bearston Prime, so he came along with his altered warriors. Despite having a full cadre of silent sisters aboard the fleet, the Torchbearer's journey through the Imperium Nifilus was difficult. 
His fleet's damaged and drained by its journey and repeated attacks from hostile forces. Shield Captain Tybar decided to rearm and repair his forces before resuming his hunt. His hopes at refitting at the docks of the mighty fortress of Belis Conona were dashed. The fortress was beset by many foes, and what resources it had were solely needed to maintain its own forces. Tyvar moved his fleet to the mining world of Barston Prime, hoping that the tech priests of the world would aid him. Unfortunately, he discovered that the world was an abandoned ruin. After telling his tech ship Magi to make what repairs they could, he led his forces to the surface of the planet to claim the resources his fleet required. The Shriven fleet materialised in the system, as the Imperial ships were missed in their repairs. The Imperial ships could do little but use their battery fire to fend off the heretic ships and protect the ore shuttles as best they could. The Enlightener had little interest in the Loyalist fleet. His true prey was on the surface, for he had sworn to defeat the shield captain in single combat. For telling the destruction of the Imperial ships, he and his forces descended on the planet. Seeing the traitor landing dropships raining from the sky, Tyver awakened the refinery's defences. The mass anti-air fire forced the traitors to land further away from the custodian position, buying time for Tyvo and his men to prepare for their defence. It became clear to Tyvo that the odds were impossible, even for the custodies. He ordered a fighting retreat. As the custodies fell back, they were pursued by the Shriven. Fabius, on the other hand, hung back with his altered warriors. Suddenly, Virtus Praetors struck the pursuing Shriven, blasting them with salvos of missiles. The retreating custodians turned back and resumed their fight with the traitors. This counterattack proved short-lived, as the Enlightener unleashed a psychic storm at the custodians, so powerful that not even the Aegis of the Emperor could halt it. Blasted back by raw war energy, the custodians were forced to retreat again. Out of the shadows, squads of silent sisters engaged the foe, and once again the retreating custodians turned to face their foes. The traitors howled as a null aura of the sisters tore at their warped minds. Even Bio recoiled from the effects of the null warriors, but thinking quickly, he prevented the shriven assault from faltering by unleashing his altered warriors and bikers. Too twisted and insane to feel the force of the null aura, these augmented warriors tore out the enormed foe. Once again, the loyalists were forced to retreat. The retreating custodians continued to mount counterattacks, but the shriven viciously rebuffed them and drove them back. Ultimately, the retreating custodians linked with the main force at the central refinery yard. Had the Enlightener been sane, he might have refought the danger of assaulting such a formidable force, but Fabius' augmentations had done terrible things to his mind. Overcome with psychotic madness, he led the Shriven into a charge. As the Shriven battled with the Custodians and the Sisters of Silence, Fabius creeped around the facility until he found a Custodian Warden and a squad of Silent Sisters overseeing the ore extracting. Loosening his altered warriors against them, the Loyalists were overwhelmed and subdued before being dragged off. With his specimens secured, Fabius led his warriors to aid the Enlightener, and found that the Shriven were hard-pressed against the Loyalists. The Enlightener himself was hovering above Tyvar, who he had forced onto his knees with his psychic might. From the shadows came the boom of a high-powered sniper rifle. The Enlightener jerked as blood gushed from the side of his skull, before crashing into the ground. With the death of their leader, the Shriven executed a fighting retreat to the landing zone. As for Bile, he gunned down the few loyalists that stood in his way before escaping with the Enlightener's body. Chapter 4 Back at Desire, Fabius addressed the remaining Shriven. He had a plan to ensure their victory over the converging enemies, but for it to work, he needed their complete loyalty. This was too much for the Enlightener surviving Chosen, who expressed their displeasure and protest. It was then Fabius revealed his newest creation, a golem that was the Enlightener in name only. The Enlightener was much changed with his blazing red eyes and muscular frame that was barely contained by his armour. Despite his skull being empty, psychic powers crackled around the Enlightener and everyone but Fabius wondered how such a thing was possible. At this, those loyal to the Enlightener drew their blades, but they were answered by beams of psychic fire that reduced them to blackened corpses. Having witnessed the gruesome demise of their comrades, the rest of the Shriven agreed to serve Bile. Bile augmented every single Shriven marine, and then directed them to lure their enemies before the Enlightener's fortress walls, so he can enact his master stroke. 
A flight of helldrakes would belch Noctus all over the battlefield. Bile assured that the toxins would be harmless to the Shriven, while driving their enemies into murderous frenzies. As their enemies tore each other apart, Bile and the Shriven would be free to make their escape. The first to arrive at Desire were the Death Guard. The Shriven tried the same night shield trick to waylay the Death Guard fleet, but this time Typhus was prepared. Using tracking entities each given the warp sent to the Shriven, the Death Guard ships detected the approach of the hidden enemies. So when the Shriven ships pounced, they were met with gun batteries aimed straight at them. The Plague Fleet made quick work of the Shriven vessels. The Enlighter and his Shriven met the Death Guard advance and tore down swathes of shambling foes for every Tetra that was dragged down. Yet to the Death Guard, this was just a distraction. They crept closer and closer to their objectives. As the Death Guard neared, Fabius realised he might have lingered too long due to his desire to experiment. Typhus had to be slowed, or else he would never escape. With regret, he unleashed his latest and finest batch of altered warriors. To this already raging battle, the Torchbearer forces descended, splitting into two. One group hammered the Death Guard rear lines before moving to engage the Enlightener. The other, led by Tyvar himself, went straight for Fabius's location, hoping to rescue this comrade he had kidnapped and, if possible, slay the heretic. Fabius unleashed his toxin-filled Helldrakes, and his masterstroke was revealed to all. As the fumes washed over the battlefield, all saw it for what it was. It was Fabius' last betrayal for the Shriven. He didn't have time or desire to tailor his toxins to work against the invaders. However, he had plenty of biochemistry data on the Shriven. The toxins, instead of driving the invaders insane, had driven the Shriven into new heights of berserk furor. One last trick to distract his enemies as he made his good escape. The escaping Fabius emerged from his laboratory expecting a clear path only to find Typhus and his Terminators trading blows with Tyvar and his hilarious custodians. Their battle was blocking his path. In anger, Fabius launched himself into the fight. As he murdered his way to safety, Fabius was shot several times. Seeing his wounded prey about to escape, Typhus charged towards him. Before his Man Reaper could connect, Bile vanished behind the ceiling doors of a bulkhead. Turning back, he found himself faced with Tyver and his custodians, knowing that if he was to fight, he could not win. Typhus used his sorcerers to cover himself in a storm of plague flies. When the flies dissipated, he was gone, leaving the surviving warriors to face the fury of the custodians alone. Meanwhile, in the main battle, the Shriven fought on. The enlightened psychic power and berserk range of his warriors felling so many foes that they were surrounded by mountains of dead. Exploiting the shriven dwindling numbers, the execution of force shrunk. From atop of a ruined spire, a sniper round raced towards the Enlightener. The Enlightener obliterated the bullet midair and sent the bolt of psychic power in the trajectory of the shot. The assassin was smashed from his perch by the explosive psychic force, sending him plummeting to his death. Next came the Calidus assassin, who emerged among the shriven cultists to plunge her phase blade into the Enlightener's chest. With a roar, the Enlightener blasted away the Calidus into a mound of corpses. Next came the Calyxus assassin, who turned the Enlightener's bellows of triumph into screams of agony, as he hit him with a beam of pure darkness, extinguishing his psychic powers in an instant. As the Calyxus flickered closer, the Enlightener's attempted to regather his psychic power. Next came the Eversaw, tearing through the altered warriors like a cannonball to pounce at the Enlightener shooting one of the Enlightener's hands with a bolt around before sinking his poisoned talon into his face. The Enlightener reached out and grabbed the Eversaw by the throat, breaking the assassin's neck. The Enlightener enjoyed a moment of victory before he was obliterated by the Eversaw's bio-explosion. With their mission complete, the Calidus and the Calyxus faded back into the shadows. Leaderless, the Shriven were finished, the last of their number hopelessly mad or fleeing. Typhus returned to his ship and ordered the Death Guard to fall back. Their prey had escaped again. With disgust and bitterness, the Death Guard retreated back to their ships. Less of a quarter of the Shield Captain's forces survived. Having accomplished their objective of exterminating the Brazen Drakes, Tyver's next course of action was to bring news to the Imperial authorities of Bio's schemes. The Torchbearer fleet collected their fallen and lamented their loss, before setting off and leaving the Cadian Gate behind them. Fabius goaded his way back to his home Urum. He had work to do there, and he would not be delayed.
All right, Chapter News, that is it for another video. This is the latest law for the Psychic Awakening book, War of the Spider. Please, if you can, go over to the link in the description and find Shikaius. Without him, this video would not be possible. As always, leave your thoughts, feedback, everything like that in the description of the video, and we can have a nice little chat about it down there, as we always do. Thank you for coming, thank you for watching, have a great day, and bye-bye.